a few years ago, I think uh, 2017, we, we, the first Labour leadership election that Corbyn won, um, was it 20, 2015, sorry, mm. uh, Myself and Toby Young launched a campaign, and for £3, you could join the Labour Party and vote for, for Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> now, I don't... He you won knew by, it would keep them out of government. Well, it's going well, A lot of people, a lot of Tories said, this is dangerous, say he wins. Yeah. Well, I don't think there's much chance of him winning in London, but I think Susanna Hall's got a fighting chance. Mm. So give her a little bit of an edge. I think a lot of Tories should sign up and uh, encourage Corbyn to run. So he's kind of on the periphery and he's mulling it over. So what are you hearing? Because obviously he doesn't owe the Labour Party anything. That's how he feels. Well, do you remember Ken Livingstone ran as an independent mm -hmm. against the Labour Party and won? And Ken goes back a long way with Jeremy. Corbyn. And I think it might be playing on his mind that it could re he could repeat the trick. Uh, we sent out people today uh, to vox pop people in his own mm. constituency, and I'd say it was split. I, I, it wasn't strongly for him, but it, there was some support for him. I watched the video. There were a lot of people who were maybe not people who you would assume to be Corbyn supporters, but were. And in reality, Paul, this door has really only been opened up because of uh, you, Les, hasn't it? It's so unpopular. So all of a sudden, even though Labour nationally look like they're probably going to cruise to victory at a general election, it could be very different in the capital. On my way here, yeah, the taxi Paris. driver was ranting about Ulez. You know, it's definitely very unpopular in the suburbs mm -hmm. where people rely on their cars more. And I think Susan Hall has been underestimated. She could using Ulez as the uh, campaign mm. uh, platform, win. Well, there's a political revolution going on, isn't there? Much of the media doesn't want to talk about it. And obviously, I have to be clear, Paul, I don't support people breaking the law or vigilante oh, justice. Right. Mm. But the Blade Runners, who are taking down more and more of the Ulez cameras by the day, uh, something's happening. You know, there is, there, is, there is something happening. There is an anger building about this policy. There, people are angry, but that, in the long run, won't work, that approach. It has to be a political solution. Uh, I mean, we saw this before with the congestion charge itself. There was a period where people were chopping those down, and there was a period when people mm. were chopping down uh, speeding cameras. In the end, you've got to have a political solution. And, of course, Susan Hall has pledged she's done so on this show 100% her first day in office, the ULES expansion. Oh, I think she's gone. Yeah. Uh, look, can we talk about uh, this police probe into Bernard Jenkins? He was the chief Partygate uh, protagonist, really became one of the witch hunters yeah. of Boris Johnson. You know how I feel about Partygate. I think the whole thing was a complete farce. You exposed that he had allegedly also broken the rules, despite the fact that he was on the Privileges Committee. What's the latest? What are you hearing? There's so the police there. are contacting potential witnesses and they are looking to get the transcripts of WhatsApp, the invitations to the parties, and they are proceeding with the investigation. And it's, the, it's their unit that deals with the uh, special crimes. So the, the, they're quite sensitive to how to deal with politicians. They've been there, seen it all before. I think where it ends up is that Bernard and the rest of them will get a letter, like the advisers and the people who were in Downing Street got mm -hmm. letters, saying, we think you're a legal party, sign on the bottom here, pay £50 fine. Or, if you deny it, risk being prosecuted and criminal, criminal um, record if you're found guilty. And that is quite a dilemma mm -hmm. when you get that, because... If you, for the politicians, particularly for Bernard, who was on his high horse mm. uh, with Boris so high that he's got to admit that actually he did exactly the same or risk getting in more trouble. And they, the, there will be people who will testify that he was there. Well, he hounded, let's be honest, he, alongside the Privileges Committee, hounded Boris from Parliament. It was a kangaroo court in my view. I mean, how can he stay an MP? In all seriousness, given the comments that he made there's, about there's, Boris. There's some background to that hounding, because everyone thinks, oh, uh, Bernard was a Brexiteer, they were on mm. the same side. Well, Bernard had only previously to that been to see Boris and said, look, I'm thinking of standing down. Can I have a peerage? And Boris said, I don't think so, Bernard. And there was a little bit of was bitterness, over that. bitterness over that. So he was enjoying twisting the knife. Yeah. But let's be honest, if he was an honourable politician, let's be honest, there's not many of them. But if he was, given what he said about Boris Johnson, if he is fined by the police, surely he would have to stand down as an MP too. 
it would be very difficult for him if he was an honourable politician. Mm. Mm. Very big if there. Very big if. So you'll be continuing your Corbyn for Mayor campaign? I think so. Forks? I think we should encourage everyone to encourage him. <laughs> Great stuff. Guido Fawkes, editor. Full states. Thank you so much. Great to have you here.